Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. During the last uh, decade, we came to the importance of the right ventricular function uh, in the prognosis, morbidity, and mortality of the patient that hospitalized. And even uh, the right ventricular function is a good uh, predicting factor for outcome of the patient response to the treatment for pulmonary hypertension and pulmonary embolism and all other lung disorder including COPD and uh, nowadays uh, we are focusing how we evaluate uh, systolic function of the uh, right ventricle unfortunately because of the shape of the right ventricle and location of the right ventricle is not possible we do the same technique you use on the Simpson for left ventricle. We cannot do, use it in the right ventricle. Besides of that, uh, right ventricle view is very hard in most cases, especially in hospitalized uh, patient. In most cases, we cannot get clear uh, all uh, right ventricle and we get it a correct, completely correct uh, view, in, especially in those category of the patient. And with all those researches, we, uh, we can find a different way to evaluate a systolic function of the right ventricle. Among those, there are five uh, parameters that we can uh, use for the evaluation of right ventricular systolic function. In the first part of this lecture, uh, the first part of this group right ventricular evaluation, I talk about the fractional area changing and di uh, dimensions. In this lecture, I am going to talk about tap C, tap C, and uh, T index or RIMP and DP over DT or rate of the increasing intraventricular pressure during systolic. Now let's go one by one how we do it and how we have to interpret them. Uh, before I go to start, I want to uh, take your attention to go and study other clips that related information you can uh, get from those clips. Uh, I, am, I cannot emphasize how much is important if you put everything together uh, when you do any type of the study, especially for the uh, systolic function. Go check each of them uh, after we finish this one. As you know, during systole, uh, base of the heart move toward the apex. And uh, like the map C on the left uh, ventricle, that is a good indicator for the uh, left ventricular systolic function. The same concept on the tricuspid annulus uh, lateral uh, will be a good indicate and reliable uh, parameter for evaluation of the uh, right ventricle systolic function. Uh, for that purpose, uh, to uh, calculate and measure uh, TAPSI or tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion, it means we are going to measure how much annulus during uh, lateral annulus of tricuspid during uh, systole move up, how much displace. And for this, uh, based on the American and European uh, echocardiography societies, the best uh, window is right uh, ventricular uh, focused view, this view, or apical four chamber. And in that uh, uh, case, we put cursor at the anterolateral annulus of tricuspid here. And then we put M mode, click M mode, and finally it gives us uh, such a mode like this. But I have to mention here one thing. As you can see here, during cardiac cycle, diastole and systole, the annulus move this way. So at the end, the hostel is here, our cursor passed through this spot, and at the end of the systole, exactly passed through the annulus. In other words, our cursor is not a parallel to the movement of the annulus. 
So in my opinion, the best technique for doing TAPSI is that we move our transducer a little more medial to the our left or right side of the patient or midline of the patient from apical four and get uh, medial off axis this view as you can see then in this situation our cursor and uh, to uh, with the un tricuspid with almost lateral movement is almost parallel and actually more than parallel of the uh, right ventricular or uh, four chamber view and in that situation we have the correct number as you can see here on this right ventricular focus view the tap c has been uh, to 23 millimeter and this one is 25 millimeter so three millimeter or two millimeter or more than two two and a half millimeter uh, differences in this case we are underestimating and this technique will be uh, much uh, more accurate now let's see how we exactly measure on the m mode uh, which spot we measure how for measuring we go and uh, hit the on the cal uh, machine measurement cal and if we select uh, tab c uh, then we go find the lowest part of the annulus uh, M mode here as you can see this is belong to the uh, annulus of tricuspid lateral anterolateral then we put one of the spot at the lowest part that correspond to the almost R and the other one at the maximum is correspond with the end systolic so endostolic and end systolic machine for us calculate the amount of the how much this this specific spot of annulus move forward in other words the real number that machine give us is this distance not this one if we don't use uh, cal uh, in the option of the cal on the machine then we shouldn't do this way we have to measure from the lowest part and make they find the highest part at that is a specific tissue and then measure this one this will be our tapsy here is the same as you can see lowest part and highest part this distance it show us that a specific spot of the tricuspid annulus move forward this amount or we can use the any spot on the annulus that has clear and we can trace it and follow it for example this is but we can use this spot and uh, we can follow it the maximum will be here so from here to here will be our here to here will be our tap C but there is one uh, trick let me show you here as you can see here in this uh, M mode the cursor pass through the myocardium and part of the most probably tricuspid and finally close to the annulus as you can see here we have different structure on the M mode some of them hypoecho that most probably is because of layer of the myocardium give you that impression and one of them is this one this measurement will be wrong because as you can see this spot is not annulus is myocardium and this myocardium become thicker so if we follow this spot and go measure this one is uh, hyper uh, we are overestimating because the myocardium become thicker so it add on a little to the amount of the displacement so the best way is that go find the at the level of the annulus tissue here all of it find the strongest hyper echo line that you can follow it through it and make sure it's not called the tendine or myocardium then uh, trace it uh, lowest part and highest part and this one is much accurate so it's lowest part and highest part so this one will be much accurate compared to this one here another one you can see on this one exactly our cursor passed through the little uh, tissue and some chorda tendine you can see chorda tendine here so we don't measure this one 
and this one is myocardium. So we go to the, this hyperecho line, we calculate that tissue that cl is close to the annulus. So our correct measurement will be this distance. In those cases that we don't have very clear uh, spot that we can follow it and make sure that is our displacement and tapsy, we can use uh, tissue Doppler M mode. Just put on the TDI, then put cursor at the annulus, then we can see very clear, sharp border of the, those amount of the displacement and then measure it. Can we do uh, TAPSI on the subcostal? For example, many patients, especially ICU patients, they don't have, uh, many of them, they don't have apical window. Uh, what we can do in those situations? Yes, like the CMR, uh, we can do uh, TAPC on the subcostal too. Uh, the only way we have to make sure uh, have good four chamber subcostal or long axis subcostal, and we can see the uh, anterolateral annulus of the tricuspid here clearly. It's not off axis too much, and then like the CMR technique with 2D measurement, we go measure how much the annulus here uh, move toward the apex with the cine loop and endiostolic and systolic how much displace uh, the annulus. As you can see in these cases, is uh, McConnell sign, as you can see, kicking in at the apex and not uh, akinetic of free wall, especially mid and basal of the right ventricle free wall. So you can measure it very almost accurate as the apical four chamber view. The normal size uh, for the tap C is equal or more than 18 millimeter. Uh, some uh, cutoff uh, for the some specific indication like the prognosis and the uh, prediction of the survival. They use usually cut off for 16 and some places cut off 17. Just remember the number age difference. For example, uh, for the young uh, athletic and young, if uh, below 20 millimeter is questionable and you have to make sure if the technique was correct, incorrect or no, the patient has some problem but generally uh, equal or more than 18 millimeter is uh, cut off for normal uh, tapsy another parameter that we can evaluate indirectly uh, right ventricular systolic function is a taps v or tricuspid annular plane systolic velocity uh, the concept is that how much uh, that annulus, how much fast move toward the apex is the same concept of the tapsy. Tapsy was the amount of the displacement. Tapsy is the velocity or speed of this uh, movement toward the apex. For that purpose, uh, like the tapsy, we go get it a correct apical full chamber most of the time is a little medial off axis like this as much as possible make the cursor parallel to the uh, annulus lateral annulus of tricuspid uh, valve that is almost parallel the best way then we put uh, tissue doppler activate tissue doppler then sample volume at the exactly annulus uh, then it gives us a spectral Doppler, as you can see here. The spectral of the tricuspid annulus or mitral valve doesn't matter, both of them. It has uh, three main, uh, main waves. One of them is S prime, that after QRS and represents systolic movement of the annulus toward the apex. S prime. We have the first negative at the early diastolic after T, E prime, and the second one negative uh, annulus move down is A prime that correspond with the after P wave. 
on the EKG. For measuring, uh, we have to remember, make sure that our uh, EKG and rhythm of the heart is regular, R to R is equal. If not, we have to uh, measure all those uh, at least three uh, bits. For example, in this case, patient has AFib and some extra bit here, uh, most probably has PAC. Anyway, in those cases, we have to uh, measure at least three uh, bits. So in this case, we have to measure this one, this one, and this one. For measuring S prime, you have to make sure that you are not measuring this spike that is correspond exactly with the QRS, exactly at the R. This from here to here, there are usually we have we see two click, click, one this click, another this one, negative positive, as you can see. This distance is IVCT. So we don't measure this one. Right after QRS. There is the wave, it can be taller than this or smaller than the spike. That is our uh, S uh, prime uh, wave. For example, in this case, as you can see, here we have click, 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 correspond with the QRS. Right after click, there is a wave, or this one, or this one will be our S prime. Or in this case, you can see again click so after that click that corresponds the qrs right after that we have this wave and we measure s prime and then some cases they are a spike don't go to measure on a spike just go strong uh, wave that give you pattern the correct way for example here is this one or this one don't go up just here go and this spot will be correct the normal uh, value for the taps V uh, will be equal or more than 10 centimeter per second. Another uh, parameter for evaluation of right ventricular systolic function is RIMP or right ventricular myocardial performance index. Is equal the same as the T index for left ventricle. It is T index for right ventricle. So for that purpose, we go the same as the TAPC and uh, not TAPC, TAPC-V that we do tissue Doppler on the uh, tricuspid annulus lateral parse Doppler on that. Then it gives us spectral of the uh, lateral uh, tricuspid annulus uh, Doppler. We have uh, many components here. We have to measure two parameters. One of them is uh, tricuspid closing and opening tricuspid valve, another ejection time. What does it mean? Uh, here, as you can see, at this number one here, is this click is closing tricuspid valve that corresponds exactly uh, at the RQR. QR or more accurate beginning of the Q. So uh, tricuspid valve closed. And then at the second time, another click here, small, you can see this is uh, opening of the pulmonary valve. So and blood start going to the pulmonary artery and it create ejection time, as you can see here, an S prime. And this level, uh, and from here, one to two, this uh, time period is IVCT, isovolumetric contraction time. And next one is here that pulmonary valve closed and here uh, tricuspid valve open and the start blood goes toward the right ventricle and create E prime. So here to here will be our IVRT, isovolumetric relaxation time. If we uh, measure all those, uh, these two and all from the TCO here, we can calculate it. Uh, MPI of the right ventricle with this formula, TCO minus ejection time divided by ejection time, a normal will be less than 0.55. Another technique for this uh, RIMP is uh, post with Doppler. For that purpose, we have to go uh, on the four chamber, we do post Doppler of tricuspid valve, and we get this one 
here for tricuspid, then we measure TCO from the end of the A to the beginning of the uh, E, the next E, and then we go to the PSAX on the pulmonary valve, we put pulse Doppler and measure ejection time from beginning to the end. The problem with this technique is that uh, we have usually bit to bit variance and the only way this technique will be accurate and correct that our, our, our interval in both of those study should be equal. That is almost uh, rarely it happen in uh, those become equal. So the best technique is a tissue doppler of the tricuspid and measuring uh, RIMP. Another parameter for uh, evaluation of right ventricular function is DP on over DT, uh, especially when we have significant uh, TR or tricuspid regurgitation. The concept is the same as uh, DP over DT on the left side, left ventricle, but a little different. And general concept is that how much intraventricular pressure increased, the, the rate and how much fast intraventricular increased. For that purpose, we go get apical uh, four chamber, the best view that get highest and correct uh, TR jet. Uh, then we increased uh, sweep speed over 100, as uh, you can see here. Then on the Cal machine, we hit the DP over DT button. In that case, machine give us a first cursor. We put the first cursor at down, downhill, uh, down, up, up stroke, sorry, up stroke here, not this uh, down stroke, up stroke of the uh, TR, the first cursor at the border of the TR. When hit that one, machine give us uh, the second cursor and we put on uh, the uh, two meter per second. The first one is one centimeter, one meter per second. Uh, we put it there, and the second one on the two meter per second, the velocity at the border of the uh, jet. As you remember, on the MR for the DP uh, over DT of the left ventricle, we measure at the one, cent one meter and three meter. Here we measure at the one meter and two meter. Then Machine calculate for us the timing uh, take it uh, go pressure from the four millimercury that equal one meter to the 16 millimercury that is at the level of the two meter this time. Then with this formula calculated our uh, this ratio. The normal ratio should be above 400 millimercury per second and be any below that will be abnormal and in another study show actually it give us better and more reliable if we measure uh, between half meter and two meter that still uh, they we don't use it and usually is not in the uh, cal machine but you can do it manually and calculate uh, this ratio with the same concept and the last uh, tips that I want to mention that in one study over uh, 144 uh, lung transplant, it showed that TAPC is not a good and not reliable parameter for evaluation of the right ventricular in patient with lung transplant. We are done. Up to the next time. Have a wonderful time.